sent to when writing the poem. And her reply was, if you have anything about the importance of art for humanity, that would be appropriate. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> is, that, is that all? <laughs> so needless to say, for this poem I needed some help. For that reason, I have taken part in an age-old literary tradition of including an epigraph. For those of you who do not know what an epigraph is, it's a quotation that is placed beneath the title at the beginning of a poem or a section of a poem. And the epigraph I've chosen helps to set the tone and the theme of the piece. The author of my chosen epigraph is Polish poet and winner of the 1980 Nobel Prize for Literature, Czesław Milosz. I find that my own ideas resonate deeply with his, and for that reason, I invoke his support. So my poem is called, An Investigation into the Importance of Art for Humanity. <laughs> an investigation into the importance of art for humanity. Quote, Epiphany interrupts the everyday flow of time and enters as one privileged moment when we intuitively grasp a deeper, more essential reality hidden in things or persons. Unquote. Cheslam Milosh. Our civilization is built on the arts. Our civilization would wilt without art. If art is what's keeping the poles apart, the planet would lose its <coughs> tilt without art. But like a patchwork quilt, it could be rebuilt if we drop all the guilt and free will with our art. Art's therapeutic, alive to the present. Art's all inclusive, that's why it's so pleasant. Art begets art, regrets, dispossessed, pushed out of the nest. When creation is playing, spirit is guest. If you are the, and you are the servant when art has a quest. Art is a garden, like Villa, Villa Farnese and the flowers that bloom on the canvas O'Keefe. Art is the gherkin, the Sphinx Eiffel Tower, the Kaaba in Mecca, the Lotus Temple flower, the Sagrada Familia, the Bulbus Pedrera, Gaudi's an oasis in the hot, dry Sahara. The Dome of the Rock and the Space Needle, St. Paul's and St. Basil's, heck, all the cathedrals. It's Vaudeville and Colville and Melville, the Tate, the Met and the MoMA, the Empire State. The Louvre and the Santa Maria delle Grazie, the Cloud, the Crown Fountain, Vatican, Uffizi. There's the patrons of arts who open their hearts and their pocketbooks freely. The Guggenheim, Sforza and the Medici. Ruel and Lord Chesterfield, the royals and councils, transforming art molehills into art mountains. You could say art's the pill to make it all better, the sun spilling out in the midst of gray weather. It's the fabric of wonder, the weave of aha, the warp and the weft of divinity's law. It's the reason Egyptians designed every surface, every Sundance, Kachina, and totem has purpose. Even clothes that we wear, if we care about fashion, reveal our reverence for art and our passion. It's why Nuria danced in the royal ballet, why prehistoric Banksy hand-painted Chauvet, Claude Monet's raison pour la water lily pond, and the meaning behind Mount Helicon. Moulin Rouge, hats off to you, Toulouse, and a feather in your cap, Velocruz. The cathedrals, the castles, the temples and towers employed thousands of artists for thousands of hours. The creation of Adam, the birth of Venus, the polished perfection of David is genius. The mystery, the meaningful look in their eyes, Vermeer and Da Vinci's ladies are prized. Artists Frida and Lita, the dome at St. Peter's, Hagia Sophia, leaning tower of Pisa. It's Rilke and Homer, Yeats, Keats and Dunn, Verlaine, Frost and Browning, Wordsworth, Tennyson. There's the scream and the thinker, Last Supper, the kiss, Jack the Dripper's drip action called Lavender Mist. Guernica studies the horrors of war. Milarepa is an example of what art is good for. Byzantine murals, mosaic and gold, are more than 1,500 years old. Not old, says the woman of Willendorf Stone, try tens of thousands of years ago. The poets all know it. It's the origin of being, the bang of creation, imagination, and seeing. It's the good and the true, imperfectly pure, evolution's expression and provocateur. Like when Warhol came on the scene with his cans to challenge a notion, handcuffing our hands. And Pina, who did the same work with her dance, 
and Hunter S. Thompson, Reframing Freelance. And what are the sounds that infuse all the air but the music of artful composers and players? Coltrane on Blue Train and Davis on Trumpet, along with James Brown, reached the Soul Music Summit. While Orbison cries, Bob Marley, no crying. While Fleetwood Mac lies, Bob Dylan ain't lying. Elvis ain't dying, Stones ain't no satisfying. Led Zeppelin to this day still electrifying. Stevie Wonder, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> Blondie, Sabbath and the Sticks. Zappa, Queen, Madonna, Cash, Franklin, NJ, and The Clash. Lennox, Species, Beatles, and Bowie. There's too many to name all my homegirls and my homies. Mary, Mary, why you buggin'? Rachmaninoff, he ain't clubbin'. Mozart's magic flute is touchin'. Cello sweets from Bach, I'm lovin'. Go ahead, girl, go ahead, get down. Go ahead, girl, go ahead, get down. Like Hendrix, the arts transfix. Unstick the tricks of power politics. Free our minds from mediocrity. Loosen the noose on honesty. Engage the gift of novelty. Art is fire, it inspires curiosity and prophecy, choreography, lithography, photography, and philosophy, ecology, mythology, and subconsciously, symbology, prosody, verbosity, and sometimes even progeny. As you can see, this list, it has no boundary, no periphery, because art's infused eternity. Forgive my dogged attempt at evidence to showcase art's Blessed benevolence. Just try recalling Miloche's eloquence the next time you find yourself feeling breathless, an interruption, a serendipity, a grasp of deeper, sweeter symmetry. In art, you find a hidden glimpse, an instance of epiphany. Thank you. Woo!